Next yeah. little bit, I want to preach to you out of Mark chapter 14. Yeah. You have your Bible. I know I say this all the time. This is some of my favorite scriptures. I, you start reading, like, man, I like that. You know, I like that. I like that. And you end up, I like the whole Bible. Um, but tonight, I get to give you a word that the Lord laid on my heart. Actually, when Greg and Beth were, were teaching on worship, uh, the Lord started laying some things on my heart. And uh, I never get tired talking about worship. I never get tired of um, worshiping Him. I just one thing I never get tired of doing is, is worshiping God. I believe I could go all day and worship. Matter of fact, I do. Uh, there's there's moments I, I break down. There's moments I get down, but uh, God always pulls me back up. Uh, tonight, Mark 14, uh, I'm going to be taking the scripture from verse three through nine, and uh, this is the word. Uh, in the last little bit, God's been really dealing with me about my worship. <clears throat> Because I used to be so worried and so concerned about everybody else's worship, I would forget to worship. <laughs> you know, I'd be so concerned about everything going on in church and how's this going and how's that going and next thing you know, the worship service would be over and I'd be sitting there going, man, I didn't worship tonight. I didn't worship today. God. Satan is the, the master of distraction. If Satan can stop your worship... I promise you the next thing you, you will do, you'll become discouraged. Uh, so tonight, I, I'm going to give you a word the title that I titled this, and just for the next few moments, Are You Broken and Spilled Out? Are You Broken and Spilled Out? That's the title that God laid on my heart, and I want to give this to you. Mark chapter 14, verse 3 through 9. Um, I wrote this down in my intro. What happens on the inside of you is more important to Jesus than your external circumstances. We, we pay more. The reason why we pay a lot of attention to the external things is because we can see that. You, you can see that. But what God keeps reminding me about is, is Brian, I'm more concerned about your soul. I'm more concerned about your spirit. I'm more concerned about your insides than I am the external things of your outside, the being who you are. God loves our inside. God saves our soul. What is your soul? It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. What is your spirit? It's called your God conscience. That when you do something, the spirit man in you says, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't say that. You better not touch that. That's your, that's your spirit man. That's your God conscience. How many of you are thankful that we got a God that will give a holy disruption to you and say, hey, don't go there. Don't do that. Don't say that. Amen. I know it's Sunday night. Go ahead and praise Him in your I'm glad we got a God that will that interrupt my schedule. To say, Brian, I love you so much, I'm going to make your life just a little miserable right now to draw you closer to me. See, we think a lot of time on misery uh, that, that God don't do that. But I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I think God allows us to be miserable to get our attention. Amen. I really believe that. So God's more concerned about what happens on the inside than what happens on the outside. See, the, the worship will take your eyes off your circumstance. I found that out to be so true. I'll come in all down and don't really understand why I feel like I feel. Sometimes I don't even know why I feel like I feel. Y'all be like, you just walk in church like, man, I just don't feel good. I just, you just don't know what's going on. But here's what I found out. When worship starts filling the atmosphere and you become spilled out and broken in your spirit, great and mighty things will take place in your life. The reason why, listen to me, the reason why a lot of churches and a lot of Christians do not experience brokenness is because they don't have no place to put Jesus. They're so full of their self. They're so full of their own ideology and their own way of thinking that when God shows up and wants to sit with you a while, you don't even have a place for the Holy Spirit to even sit because you're so full of you. So true. Been there and I've done that. So tonight I want to read this to you. If you're there, say amen. Mark chapter 14, the Holy Spirit let me preach this word. Less of me and more of you. Mark chapter 14, verse 3. It says, While he was in Bethany, reclining, I like it. I like a God that will recline. I like it. That's where the that's where they got recliners from. God was reclining, hallelujah. At the table. Yeah, this is, this is a good word. In the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster 
jar with very expensive perfume. I'm going to give you a word that you probably never heard tonight, so listen close. Made with pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. She took that, that oil. She broke that oil and she poured that oil on Jesus. Boy, this is a good word tonight. Listen to this. Some of those present were saying indignantly, listen to this to one another, why this waste of perfume? Well, people say, why in the world do they have a Sunday night service? Why in the world do they raise their hands? Why in the world do they act crazy when they come to church? Why in the world do they say amen and oh glory and oh men? Why in the world do they act that way? Because here's why. Because we believe what we preach. We believe in the authority of God. We believe the Bible. So why do I act crazy? Why do I say oh glory? Why do I preach on a Sunday night. It's not for entertainment or money or anything. It's because I believe in the name and the word of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. We believe that in this house. Here's what they were saying. Why? Why were they? Here's what they're talking about back and forth. Here's a good business meeting. You know, ready? Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages. Now let me tell you something. You've got to relate that to our times today. Would you set out for a year and then pour your worship on God? How much are you giving God? See, we think giving God a tenth, we're doing Him good. We think by just coming to church, we're doing God a favor. Can I tell you something about the authority of God? You'll want to tithe. You'll want to be in His presence. You'll want to sing His praises. You'll want to dance in the Spirit. I'm trying to preach tonight, but y'all sitting there looking at me like, what's going to happen? <laughs> it's the truth. You get the, you get the, I can't help it. I've got to. I want to. I, I can't stop. Because if I stop, my worship will go back down. And I'm not going to go too far tonight to ever go back down where the old devil used to have. I don't want to ever go back down where the old Oh, did, did she break all her wages for a year and break that all and pour it on Jesus' head? Why, why would she do that? Listen to this. It could have been sold for more than a year's worth of wages and the money given to the poor. I love the Lord. And He rebuked her heart. Listen to this. Listen, He said, leave her alone. See, I want to tell you, you've got somebody fighting for you tonight. Yes. You've got somebody, I know you may feel lonely out in that congregation tonight. I know you may feel like you're in a battle all by yourself. And here you are, you don't have nobody with you. But I'm going to tell you, above all other people, I love my wife. But I praise the Lord, I've got Jesus on my side. Amen. I praise the Lord that when I'm alone, He's still there with me. Amen. Amen. He said, I rebuke them harshly. Yeah. This was Jesus. Jesus ain't a will. He's not a whim. Jesus said, why are you bothering her? I can just see Jesus rise up. You better leave them Elkhorns alone. You better leave them worshiping people alone. You better leave them alone because they come tonight to give me praise in this house. You better leave them alone and back up because God's in the house. Hallelujah. See, we got somebody fighting for us. You ain't got to fight. You got God fighting for you. Amen, brother. Look what he says. She has done a beautiful thing to me. She's done a beautiful thing to me. Verse 7. The poor will you always have with you. Watch this. I don't want to break this old Kentucky tradition that we got going on. Right? The poor will always be with us. The beggars will always be with you. But one thing that will not always be here on earth is the Holy Spirit. One day His hand will come off and the rapture will take place. And everything that you have done, everything that you have decided, then will be worthwhile. She's done a beautiful thing to me. The poor will be with you always. You'll always have them with you. You can help them anytime you want to. <laughs> you can reach in your pocket and give them a dollar anytime you want to. They'll always be with you. This is not a mean, mean thing. By no means. 
But this is just a true sermon. Jesus Christ said, he said, you know what? One thing I'm begging the church to do is to break the break their tradition of worship. Now, at that point, we, we're contemporary. But can I tell you, we don't have it all figured out yet? Right. Amen. Can I tell you, I know we've seen signs and wonders and miracles, and I know we've seen cancer get out of people's bodies, and I know, but listen, that's normal. I know you don't hear stuff like this all the time. That's normal. But God touches the blind, and the blind shall see. He done that every day. He, he done that every day. But the Bible says one thing I'm looking for as I stroll this earth. I'm looking for faith and I'm looking for worshipers. I'm looking for people that will come undignified and stand up for God and say, as for me and my house, I will worship God. No matter what it takes, I will get in His presence. How about you tonight? Is that you in this house? He says, oh, he says you always have the poor, but you might always have me. Therefore, that's why I'm so passionate Worship while you got a chance to worship. Praise His name. Hallelujah. I don't care who's looking at you, who's sitting beside you, you should praise His name no matter where you're at. Amen. No matter where you're at. I'm talking about going in Walmart and have a little buggy, a little basket. Hallelujah. Praise His name. Put your groceries in the basket praising His name. I don't know. At the gas pump, put it in there and say, God, I think I got 50 more dollars that I can put, put gas in my vehicle without sweating it anymore. Right. Hallelujah. I hope y'all just didn't miss what I said. You got a praise break for five seconds right there. And don't miss it. Amen. Come on, come on. Because why? I come to worship tonight. 
And when you start getting distracted, now I understand there's a lot of distractions. But if you get in the zone, hallelujah, I think about an old horse. I talked about a horse this morning. I want to talk about him right too. Horses got blinders on. The reason why they don't even pay attention to what's going on to the right, hallelujah, I'm getting this now. And they don't even pay attention to what's going on to the left. As long as they got them blinders on, they see the cross in front of them. They don't even know. something tonight that God gave me in my spirit. Here we go. Number one. We have to bring our worship. I got this out of this when I read this. We have to bring our worship. It is so hard. It's, listen to me. I'm, I'm going to teach for just a moment. It is so hard to come with a bad spirit and end up the house. Amen. And, do, and act like a transformer. Amen. Amen. All of a sudden we're a transformer. But your mind is sitting there and you're still thinking about the old things you brought into the church. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Church is like a, a gas station. You'll come here to this morning and you'll come here tonight and you'll get fueled up. You'll get the presence of the Lord to run you to Wednesday. And then you'll have to take another pit stop, hallelujah, to get refilled back up. But I'm telling you, you should have more church at home Amen. than you do on a Sunday morning in this house. If you're not worshiping God on a Monday and a Tuesday and a Thursday and a Friday and a Saturday, you're coming to, well, I'm not getting fed. <laughs> Feed yourself. Amen. How old are you? Are you on Simulac or are you eating meat? Yeah. <laughs> Well, the preacher's not getting deep enough. I'm going to get off that. Because here's the deal. If you're just doing it, at one point I told you, you bring your worship, you won't worry about you. All of a sudden you'll say, God, it's not about me. It's about praising your name in this house. Let some be in more of him. As I decrease, he increases. Amen. Get out of the way. And you'll be filled. Hallelujah. See, I think Christians need so much faith. Before you get that miracle, you just start praising. That's hard. It's really hard. For some of you right now are in my teaching tonight, and, and you're going through a hard time. But I'm telling you, what faith will start growing in your life when you start saying, "God, this don't make no sense." And Lord, it's really tough for me to praise you right now. But God, I'm going to praise you through the storm. I'm going to praise you through this season. I'm going to praise you in my marriage. Even though my marriage is not looking good, I'm going to praise you anyhow. My children are acting crazy just like I did when I was 14 or 15. Amen. But Lord, I'm, I'm going to praise you. I bring my worship. Listen to this. You write this down if you're taking notes. Before I get to church, I start worshiping Him before I get here. That way when worship starts in that first song, I've got my worship with me. It's in me. It's who I am. If you're sitting there going, well, they're playing too long. I'm being honest with you. But thank God, thank the Lord, I have been so blessed. And they'll go back to show, I think y'all as crazy as I am. I think y'all come and go, where's he at? Where's the Lord? I need him, I want him, I gotta have him, hallelujah. Y'all come in hungry and thirsty for the Lord. And all of a sudden, Greg gets that first little string. Y'all like, y'all up. Y'all ready. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of churches. One thing, listen to me. We're found saying, one thing that is missing in the culture today is true, authentic, God-filled worship. It's worship. It's worship. It's worship. I want to praise you, God. I want to worship you. I praise you, God, because you are worthy to be praised. God, I may be sick in my bones, but God, you're all I got. Lord, you are the very air that I breathe. You are my desire. You're, you're what I thirst and hunger after, God. Oh, God, I praise you because I'm thirsty and hungry. Oh, is my soul pants full of water. 
I shall be filled. Number two. Serious point right here. You just don't have to bring your worship. You have to break your worship. Mm. You have to, let, me, let me go ahead and tell you something. Y'all ready for this? I hope I don't make you mad. If you have been saved longer than a year and nothing has changed in your worship, something's wrong. Are y'all getting me? There's people in John chapter 4 that said, which mountain do we worship you on? God, do we worship you on this mountain or that mountain? God says, oh, you don't worship me on either mountain. You just worship me in spirit and truth. I'm telling you, you've got to break your worship. This woman, I love this woman. She's got a passion about her. She says, I will get to God with this oil. Oil in the, in the Bible represents the Holy Spirit. So what she was saying was this word. So listen to me. She broke this oil. She broke her worship. She broke everything that she had, but she didn't waste it. Hey, I want y'all to get this in your spirit like so bad. To some of you, you're more concerned about being politically correct than you are worship. God says, when you come into my house, listen, she went where God was at. She knew where the Lord was at. I know the Lord is at Elkhorn. I know His presence is here. And when I come in, I bring my worship with me and I break my worship. I don't waste my worship. I don't care if you like it or not. I'll be the praiser on my pew. I'll give Him praise. I'll give Him honor. And I'll give Him glory. No matter what I do, I'll praise my Lord. I'll be the praiser on my pew. I'll be honest with you. Most people sit back and they judge the worshipers. They do. Most people will sit back and say, well, is that real? Was that not real? Listen, I know we've got to judge the, judge the fruit of the Spirit. I understand that. But I'm telling you, when you come into the house of God, if you'll bring your... Now listen, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a good word. If you'll bring your worship with you, if you'll break your worship, and if you will not waste your worship, but anoint the presence of God. In other words, let His Holy Spirit run out into the room. That's exactly what happened, Greg. Right? The Bible, the commentary, Dr. McGee said these words. He said, the fragrance of the Lord, the fragrance of the Lord filled the temple. Because why? She brought her worship. She broke her worship. And when she broke her worship, she anointed the presence of God. Lord, we welcome you in this house tonight. Lord, show up in this house tonight. Lord, we welcome your Holy Spirit in this house tonight. And when God's Spirit comes in, He fills His temple. Does this make right. sense to y'all? That's right. Is this really y'all getting this tonight, right? Yeah. You bring your worship, you break your worship. When you break that worship, you don't waste your worship. You regard say, God, it's on you. Because without God, nothing will happen. You will have a failed marriage without God. It's hard enough with Him. I can't imagine without Him. I pray for that all the time. Bobby said, Bless him, Lord. I have to lay hold of hands. <laughs> There's nothing like God keeps speaking to so my broken this down today. There's nothing like a broken son. Dr. McGee all he said these words to him, just bless me. The room was still with people. And she was a woman. Not that they were less than or anything because they're not. Not God has no respect for persons. God loves a woman just like He loves a man. He sure does. But Dr. McGee said this was she wanted God so much. Here's what she did. She had that oil in one hand. And she got on her hands and knees and she crawled into the room where Jesus was at. Lord, you let somebody get a bottle of oil in their hand and crawl down the altar, the, the aisle. And Lord, they'll sit there and go, what the world is wrong with them? But I'm telling you, you've got to break your worship. you got to break it. I, I, I know you, I hear you, y'all the time I'm always going, raise your hands and receive this. I believe that. I believe that. The Bible says that she broke that, that jar of oil 
She placed it on Jesus' head. And the Bible says even, even in the Old Testament that Aaron, the high priest, they anointed his head with oil and the oil ran down his face even, even anointed his whiskers. His whiskers. He had so much of the oil on him. Oil represents what? Holy Spirit. Then it went down his whiskers. Hallelujah. He said that it went down his whiskers and touched the floor and the, everybody in the house felt it. I'm telling you, when God shows up, something God's eyes is bound to happen. They mocked her. The disciples were more worried about the waste than the money. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Double dog, uh-oh. More concerned about, about money and about whatever the wages then you work up filling the house with the presence of God. My Lord, this is a preach. The disciples were more concerned about the waste and the wages than they were the presence of God. The poor, you can call this a prophetic word, you can call it whatever you want. I'm begging you in the name of Jesus Christ, never lose the smell of sheep. Never lose the smell of sheep in this house. Never ever get so to the point going, how much is this and how much is that? I'm telling you the truth. When you become like that, you'll miss the presence of the Lord. I didn't say it. It says it right here in the Bible. If you're more concerned about money and wages and how's this or how's that, I hear this all the time. And I praise God that we got a church that's messed up. I've been to churches before. If there's a, if there's a mark on the wall, they go, they go crazy. Yeah. Who did that? <coughs> we gotta talk to them. Where are they at? Skin them. <laughs> I praise God that we got a house that's so full of children, so full of youth, that tonight, even on Wednesday night, we're having four, almost 400 people on a Wednesday night. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm so thankful that we got a house full of babies. I've never heard nobody in this church say, man, I just don't know what we're going to do. Here's, here's the attitude of y'all's leadership. Y'all ready? We'll get it done. We'll get it done. Whatever it takes, we'll get it done. And Terry, I thank God for you over there. God and Bobby. And I thank God for people, managers, and, and positions in this church that you know what? We'll get it done. We're worried about souls. How many souls we got, Pastor? We got over 400 and some souls right now going to heaven because we got the attitude that we're going to get it done. this. Oh, by the way, y'all remember Naaman in the, in the Bible? God anointed his eyes with mud. And he said, Naaman, you go dip yourself seven times in the Jordan. Naaman said, in the Jordan? He's blind. Has mud on his eyes. We would flip out. You made somebody that mud all over their face. Where are you going? I'm going to Jordan. <laughs> I mean, I, it was that real, Tommy. It was that real. Yeah. He said, you're going to give seven times in the Jordan. Yeah. Here's old Naaman. He went down the first time and come back up. He said, I can't see. And he said, dip again. Yeah. He went down the second time and come back up. He couldn't see. Dip again. We need a bunch of dippers. Hallelujah. Yeah. I wondered if Naaman would have stopped at the sixth time. He'd have left blind. Get born. Dip again. Dip again. Oh, it don't look good. Dip again. Things ain't going good. Dip again. Dip, 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 dip. Hallelujah. I'm talking about school. <laughs> Talking about dipping in the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Things ain't looking good dipping in the presence of the Lord. Let God fill you with His Spirit. You bring your worship to church. Don't you wait for Greg to get on the guitar. Have you noticed that don't work? Greg, I'm telling you, I, you he, if he gets mad at me, it's his fault. <laughs> Did y'all hear this? Let God preach to y'all tonight. 
You know when we'll see salvation is when we bring our worship. When we come in expecting. See, some of these expectors are expired. Some of you, you walk into worship and you say, well, it's cold. You hang on and we'll warm up with the Holy Ghost. You start moving and grooving and breaking it. Not your leg, but breaking it. You start doing some calisthenics in the name of J, E, and you'll tell you to warm up. But if you sit there like old popsicle, <laughs> can y'all handle a Sunday night nail corn? Is it true? Oh, Jensen Franklin said it best one time. He said we got too many popsicles in the church. Yeah, popsicles and momsicles and babysickles and all kinds of sickles. And all God's wanting you to do is bring your worship. Break your worship. Don't waste your worship. Say, God, I'm putting it back on you. And everything that you have, I'm ready to receive it. Y'all get this one? <coughs> you bring your worship. You break your worship. After you break your worship, you don't waste it. You use your worship. You anoint the one who, who gives the anointing. Hallelujah. Yeah. You anoint the one who gives you the opportunity to worship. And once you put the oil back on who it belongs to, He'll fill the house. Amen. What a good word from the Lord. Last one's this. I'm done. Praise team, I'm coming. God will bless our worship. Y'all hanging with me? I want, I, want, I want to show you something. I don't know who lied to the church, but I'm getting ready to speak a truth over the church. Worship will cost you. Y'all got me? Angie, worship will cost you something. This woman took her year's worth of wages and she brought it to church with her. And she said, God, I'm going to worship you. I brought my worship. I'm breaking my worship. I'm not wasting my worship no more. And God, I'm going to put it on you because without you, I am nothing. I can't do anything without you touching me in this house. I can't preach. I can't teach. I can't walk straight. I can't do anything without the presence of God in my life. Amen. I don't know how you feel, but I know what I know. I can't do anything without the presence of the Lord in my life. I go to bed with Him on my mind. I don't like Sunday nights because I've got to tell you goodbye for another was a Wednesday. The hardest thing for a pastor is what I'm getting ready to do is give the final benediction, the final invitation on a Sunday night. Because I've been hanging out with people and I love it. I've been hanging out and feeling the presence of God and experiencing the Him like never before. Oh, by the way, when you left today, two more souls got saved today. Hey! back there talking a while ago in leadership and Howard said, how many we got to baptize? I said, I don't know, about 20. I hope about 20. I started thinking about that. Blessed. You guys, I love thank you for allowing me to be your pastor. I don't want to ever take for granted what God has given me. JT, don't ever Granted that God can put a guitar in your hand and you can play it like nobody's business. Don't ever take that for granted. Not everybody can do that. I wonder that wish I could do that. And when you're up there, I'm like, look at him. Look at him. He, he's not even looking at the guitar. Look at Greg. He ain't even looking at the guitar. I remember going, ding, 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 I wouldn't even be doing that. I'd be going, ding. All about 20. December the 2nd, mark the calendar. We're going to fill that old baptistry up again. Yeah. And we're going to baptize again. And again. And again. And again. And again. Make it in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Make it on the Lord. That you get to baptize. Right, I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Billy Carroll's in the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are blessed to be here tonight. 
I know you may not feel like it, but you're blessed to be in this house tonight. Don't forget what God is doing. I ask you a question. Did you run your worship tonight? A deeper question. Have you broke your worship tonight? And if you broke it, where did you place the oil? Where did you place the oil? That's the most important question. Because I know people like this. Lord, give me a double dose. Lord, let me do it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? You place the worship back on who is the one that, that you should worship. When y'all do that, you watch me. And I claim this is like this house. Bring your worship. Break your worship. Don't waste your worship. Put your all on the one who's anointed and holy one that can fill this house. And when you do that, oh, it costs you. But God says, I bless you. I bless you. Turn your neighbor and say, I'm blessed. I wrote this down. If you knew tonight, was your last night on earth? If you knew tonight was your last night on earth, how would you worship? How would you worship? Part two of that question is how do you know it's not your last night? So I'm going into invitation. Maybe some of you lost your worship. I wrote this. There's three kinds of people. Y'all ready? Three kinds of people. Those who love to worship. <coughs> Those who worship out of routine. Those who just never worship. I know where I'm at tonight. I know who I'm preaching to tonight. I, when God first gave me this word, I said, going, God, this is their corn. It's like, I know. They need to worship. If you knew this was your last night on earth, how would you worship? And how do you know it's not your last night? the Holy Spirit tugging you, you don't wait for the temptation, you come. If you feel that the Holy Spirit's tugging you, you come. Why not just come right where you're at and don't make no difference? We're going to go on. You know what I'm saying? Worship. Are you broken and spilled out for God? Are you broken and spilled out for God? Father God, in the name of Jesus. I pray tonight, Lord, that we got this in our spirit. That, Lord, you gave us spiritual ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. That, God, in this house tonight, if anyone is lost, does not know you, oh, God, save their souls. Lord, if there's people here tonight, they don't even know how to bring their worship. I pray for them. And I pray for the ones who bring the worship, but they never break the worship. I pray, God, that, Lord, tonight they'll break their worship. And, Lord, they'll take that oil and anoint the head of Jesus Christ. Oh, I feel that. Pray this prayer, believing that your words will not come back void. Somebody's going to get this tonight. Bless that husband, bless that wife, bless that youth. Bless that church member of God that thinks they got it all figured out. Lord, let us all know tonight, God, in any God-given moment, the trumpet can sound. Let us worship you like it's our last night of worship. And Lord, if we do that, you said you'll bless us. In Jesus' name. Church, this altar's open.